Hello gems welcome to a series in this video of a series we are going to discuss previous year bitset questions from the chapter of magnetism and matter do i have anything else to say no sponsors no promotions all right let's begin So question one and two over here. No question categorizing today. So let's dive straight into it. Okay. So question one from two thousand and five. What happens when a magnet is heated? It becomes warm. Where is that option? A. Hey, no. Besides that, it will also lose its magnetism. Okay. So uh, option A over here is the correct choice. Okay. When a magnet is heated, it will lose its magnetism. Why is that so? Uh, that is because when you heat it, when you increase the temperature. what happens is that uh, the atoms which are there or more specifically the domains which are there they will align in such a way that they will align in a random fashion and in a such a way that they will cancel the magnetic moment of each other okay so they align randomly on increasing the temperature they align randomly so as to cancel the magnetic moment of each other no magnetic moment no magnetism right so on heating the magnet uh, loses its magnetism so today we have a theoretical chapter so most of the questions will be uh, theory based okay so i hope you have read your ncert very well let's come to question 2 susceptibility of a ferromagnetic substance is uh, greater than 1 less than 1 0 or equal to 1 another theoretical one you should be ready with your answer in 3 2 1 okay the correct choice over here is option a Uh, it is quite clearly mentioned in your ncert that susceptibility of a ferromagnetic substance is greater than 1 okay it's positive and in fact it is much greater than 1 it is in thousands or 10000s okay so in fact uh, okay it's greater than 1 much much greater than 1 so yeah uh, here option a greater than 1 is the correct choice over here let's just briefly discuss about the other materials like uh, ferromagnetic is one uh, then we have paramagnetic and diamagnetic right for diamagnetic the susceptibility is small and negative okay for diamagnetic it is small and negative okay so it's less than 0 but it is a uh, small value okay small value less than 0 small and negative for paramagnetic it is small and positive okay so it is greater than 0 for paramagnetic it is greater than 0 but a small value Okay, so uh, basically between zero and one for paramagnetic, and for ferromagnetic we know it. It's greater than one, much much greater than one. Okay, next question. Question three and four over here. In question three from two thousand and eight, uh, we have a coil which is carrying current I. The cross-sectional area of this coil is A. Number of turns uh, in this coil is N. You are supposed to find the magnetic. a uh, moment of this coil okay so some of you might directly know it as a formula that uh, magnetic moment of a coil is nia right so option a nia is the correct choice over here uh, so anyways for those who don't know about this you can think about a loop okay a current carrying loop the magnetic moment of a current carrying loop is i into a right m is equal to i into a i the current into the area vector right uh, but here uh, in this case we have a coil right a coil of n turns so what will happen the current will basically becomes uh, will become n times of i right so magnetic moment will become n i a okay so n i a option a is the correct choice over here anyways you can also do it by dimensional analysis if you want to waste your time yeah you can do it that way as well but um, that is not worth it right uh, wasting so much of time behind uh, such a question okay such a easy question let's come to question 4 now horizontal component and the dip angle at uh, the north pole are respectively okay so let's analyze this situation uh, let's go to the north pole okay we go to the north pole with a needle uh, you can see that the needle will dip okay dip in this way the north end of the needle will point downwards right towards the north pole okay so this will be the condition over there it will be in the vertical direction the needle will be in the vertical direction and the north end uh, will point towards the north pole okay so you can easily see that the angle of dip over here is 90 degree right angle made with the horizontal is 90 degrees the angle of dip is 90 degrees uh, which is the 
maximum value right maximum value of angle of dip is 90 degrees so angle of dip is maximum uh, that we know and what can you say about the horizontal component now uh, you can see that the needle is pointing in the vertical direction right which means that the needle the direction of the needle shows the direction of the net field right so which means the net field is in the vertical direction there is no field in the horizontal direction okay because the needle uh, is pointing down in the vertical direction okay no field in the horizontal direction so the horizontal component of the magnetic field is zero so horizontal component zero and the dip angle is maximum 90 degrees right so zero maximum again option a is the correct choice over here yes option a is the correct choice next question So question 5 over here, in this question you are given that the susceptibility of magnesium at 300 kelvins is 1.2 into 10 to the power minus 5, okay. You are supposed to tell a temperature at which the susceptibility of magnesium increases to 1.8 into 10 to the power minus 5, okay. So here you can in fact make a nice observation that all the options are less than 300 kelvin okay uh, which is quite obvious right in order to increase the susceptibility you have to decrease the temperature i'm pointing to curie's law okay c is equal to c mu naught by t okay susceptibility is equal to c mu naught by t you can see that susceptibility and temperature are inversely proportional okay you are not supposed to know that you are just supposed to exploit the fact that susceptibility is inversely proportional to temperature okay now we'll use G1 by G2 is equal to T2 by T1, okay, inverse relation, okay, G1 by G2 is equal to T2 by T1. Now substitute the values, get your answer, okay, I'll, uh, I'll now not write this 10 to the power minus 5 because I know in ratio it will get cancelled, right, so 1.2 divided by 1.8, it will get cancelled and here we'll have T2 divided by T1 is, T1 is this, right, first case 300 so here you solve it that will give you 6 2 za 6 3 za okay 6 2 za 6 3 za into 300 is equal to t2 so this 100 za and temperature 2 is 200 kelvin okay so option b 200 kelvins is the correct choice over here just simple use of Curie's law. Okay, next question. Question 6 over here. In this question, it is given that the vertical component of Earth's magnetic field is equal to uh, its horizontal component. Okay, then you are supposed to find the angle of dip. Now, some of you might directly know it as a result. Very good. Uh, that when the vertical and the horizontal field or uh, the horizontal components of earth's field are equal the angle of dip is 45 degrees okay but if you don't know you can use the relation 10 of angle of dip is equal to bv by bh okay 10 of angle of dip is bv by bh okay so here bv is equal to bh so this will become 1 right bv is equal to bh this will become 1 and you can see that 10 of angle of dip is 1 which means that angle is 45 degrees right 10 of 45 is 1 so that angle should be 45 degrees uh, also you can see it this way that uh, the horizontal component will be in this direction vertical component over here right? this is the horizontal component of earth's magnetic field and this is the vertical component suppose now these two values are equal right it is given uh, they are equal so they are resultant the resultant will be uh, will be a vector which is going to bisect them right this angle is 90 degrees and their resultant is going to this is the net magnetic field over there and this is going to bisect this angle so this angle over here will be 45 degrees you can easily see the net magnetic field is making an angle of 45 degrees with the horizontal which means angle of dip is 45 degrees okay by the way uh, this is derived from here okay you can see 10, uh, 10 of your angle of dip is BV by BH, okay, opposite upon adjacent, okay. So anyways, you can use any method, the answer is 45 degrees. The horizontal and the vertical components of Earth's magnetic field are equal when the angle of dip is 45 degrees. Next question. 
So question seven over here. In this question, the work done to turn this magnet by 90 degrees. Okay. So we know this from work power energy that work done will be nothing but the change in potential energy. Okay. So you can find the initial potential energy, then the final potential energy. Initial potential energy will be potential energy in this configuration. Final potential energy will be the potential energy in this configuration. Out to north, it is turned 90 degrees. right and the field remains the same okay so it is turned 90 degrees here you will find your final potential energy and then uh, initial minus final okay that will give you your uh, change in potential energy and that will be nothing but the work done okay or instead of doing that i can directly use the formula that work done will be change in potential energy and change in potential energy uh, will be given as mb cos theta 1 minus cos theta 2 Okay, this is the formula for change in potential energy. Okay, so M B cos theta one minus cos theta two. You can only see that uh, the only thing changing over here is the angle, right? M and B is the same. So let's find the change over here. So M B, so M and B are same in both the cases. Magnetic moment. Uh, for in first case, in the initial case, theta one, you can see that the angle between the magnetic moment, the magnetic moment is from south to north. right so magnetic moment and the magnetic field are parallel which means initially the angle is zero okay so cos of zero one okay so cos theta one theta one is zero okay parallel okay so uh, theta one is zero cos zero one now what about theta two you can see that uh, it will be from south to north again okay and you can see that it makes an angle of 90 degrees with the magnetic field now right this angle is 90 degrees it is perpendicular to the magnetic field now so theta 2 is 90 cos 90 0 okay so 1 minus 0 so that will be nothing but mb right so change in potential is uh, potential energy is nothing but mb and which is nothing but the work done so the work done is option d mb okay let's move to the next question So question eight over here. In this question, you are supposed to guess the correct plot of uh, susceptibility of a diamagnetic substance versus temperature. Okay, I remember in one of the questions that we spoke about today. Okay, that we discussed today in this class. I mentioned that the susceptibility of a diamagnetic substance is small and negative. Right, small and negative. So you can see that only option B shows the negative value of susceptibility. So option b is the correct choice over here moreover i want to stress on one more point that uh, the susceptibility of a diamagnetic substance is independent of the temperature okay it is temperature independent you can see the same constant value throughout the different temperature okay so two points one is uh, one is that it is temperature independent okay and two is uh, it is small and negative okay susceptibility is small and negative and it is temperature independent it does not depend on temperature now you'll say what happened to the curie's law which used to say that susceptibility is inversely proportional to temperature mind you curie's law is only valid for purely paramagnetic substances okay so for diamagnetic your susceptibility is independent of temperature okay for paramagnetic you say uh curie's law you say that susceptibility is inversely proportional to temperature okay so use curie's law only in case of paramagnetic substances okay so anyways option b is the correct choice over here let's move to the next question so question 9 over here in this question you are supposed to tell the correct graph of magnetic moment versus temperature okay so this is something which is not that straight forward so let's do it by elimination okay so let's see option a option a says that uh, the magnetic moment should decrease linearly now it will decrease but not linearly right not necessarily uh, the fall will be linear because if you see uh, when you increase the temperature there is random alignment of domains right and uh, that won't be linear right so random alignment of domains which cancels out the magnetic moment of each other okay so that's why the magnetic moment decreases but uh, i mean that the random alignment or when you increase the temperature will not be linear 
right so option a is incorrect over here okay because uh, the fall won't be linear basically now let's come to option b okay here uh, the problem is that it says it shows an exponential graph right and if we think about it the major problem is that it says that the magnetic moment will be zero at t is equal to infinity right it will become zero at infinity magnetic moment will become zero at infinity which we know is not true right because we know that if we heat a magnet if we overheat a magnet it will lose its magnetism from question one right so we know that at some finite value of temperature at some temperature t uh, the magnetic moment should become zero at some finite value of temperature the magnetic moment should become zero not at infinity okay so there is a problem in this graph option b is also incorrect uh, option c is correct let's come to option d okay here you can see the fall okay magnetic moment is decreasing and it's not linear okay anyways uh, let's prove option d wrong here it says that okay, oh my god complete blunder right so it says that magnetic moment is independent of your temperature whatever temperature you apply magnetic moment will uh, magnetic moment will not be uh, affected okay which is obviously wrong because when you increase the temperature the same argument right uh, random alignment of the domains then cancelling out of the magnetic moment of each other mag loss of magnetism okay so of course this is incorrect magnetic moment should decrease so only option left with us is option C which is correct uh, over here because magnetic moment is decreasing and it is not linear. Uh, some of you might uh, think it this way you can compare this with susceptibility that is not wrong I'll say. Okay the general graph of sus uh, susceptibility you begin with a ferromagnetic substance so you go for the graph of susceptibility uh, versus temperature okay we begin with a ferromagnetic substance we heat it okay so it's ferro uh, so it's positive first uh, the susceptibility is positive then it falls okay the ferromagnetic substance becomes a uh, paramagnetic okay the value becomes small and positive small and still positive and finally it becomes diamagnetic and then saturates okay so yeah so you can compare it with the first half of the graph right this half Okay, so some uh, teachers might also tell you it this way. Okay, so anyways, option C is the correct choice over here. Let's move to our homework question and then we'll wrap up with the class. Nothing much today because this is a theoretical chapter. Okay, so next question. So question 10 over here, this is your homework question. You can pause the video here, take a screenshot if you wish to try it later. Okay. So that's all for today's class. That's all what the previous year questions had to say. I'll recommend to you uh, to go ahead and practice more such type of questions to practice more questions from other concepts as well uh, like hysteresis, magnetization and other terms and also from earth magnetism and other theory of the chapter. Okay. So basically revise the chapter, do previous year questions and do give mock tests. Okay. Uh, that is uh, three ways how you prepare efficiently for a competitive exam. Uh, just a quick note over here, this question is not from Bitset. This is uh, one of those questions that I had noted down when I was your age preparing for Bitset. Okay, so this is not a Bitset question as such, okay? So that's all for today's class. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, smash like, subscribe. We'll see you soon in the next one. Till then, keep enjoying physics.